Hi all, in this particular video, we will be dealing with the common paper which is being offered for S3 and S4 under the Kerala Technological University which is titled as Professional Ethics. And Professional Ethics is going to be a 150 mark paper out of which your 50 marks is for your internal assessment whereas your 100 marks is for your end semester examination. All right. So we will be starting with the first, the very first module and we have five modules in this particular paper, Professional Ethics. So we'll be starting with the first module which we call it as Human Values. Before getting into uh, the different aspects of human values, you need to be familiar with what is the meaning of the term value. The term value has its origin from the Latin word value, which means worth of. So value is something which we call it as worth of. That means, uh, for example, if we go and buy some, uh, for example, if we go and uh, buy a pen from a shop, when the shop owner says that the pen cost for 10 rupees, which means that the value for that pen is 10 rupees. So value means uh, in, in, a very daily basis or in a layman perspective, we call it as uh, the value in terms of monetary benefits. But when it comes to professional ethics, value means which is worth of or which is actually very beneficial for the society. And human values is defined as those values which helps a man to live in harmony with a society, which means that human values are nothing but are those values which helps a man to live in very peaceful in the society which he or she belongs to. Now, what are the sources of human values or we call it as what are the elements or what are the uh, sources or we call it as, uh, you know, when it comes to sources, it's all about uh, where you get these values from. So the very important source of human values is your family itself. Because from the childhood onwards, the very element of, you know, respect your seniors or respect others are being inculcated from your family members. When you see or when you wish an elderly people, we actually got that idea of wishing or greeting an elderly people as being inculcated by the family itself, your parents, your cousins or your relatives. So the main source of your human value is from your family. The second one is your social factors. Social factors refers to from the society, from the people that you belong to. The third one is your personal factors. So personal factors means the values which is being, you know, inculcated by family differs from time to time and space to space. The values that we inculcate in uh, Ernankulam district is entirely different from the values that we inculcate in uh, Kasargod or Calicut, which means that according to the personal preferences, according to the surroundings that we belong to, the human values differs. The next one is your cultural values or the cultural factors. That means the cultural setup or the cultural um, scenario that you belong to. That actually influence a lot in building up a good human value. Then you have your regional factors. Regional factors again depends on the space, not time. De depends on your uh, space where you belong to. It, the values and the value system differs. Then you have life experiences. When you talk about life experiences, your human values uh, evolves through your education system, your friends, your peer group, your office, your workspace, everything. So from your very own personal experiences, you actually inculcate the uh, so-called values in your life. The next one is your role demands. Role demands uh, basically means according to your roles in your life, you inculcate or you start developing some values. For example, if you're in a teenage, your value system is entirely different. When you get married, your value system changes because your responsibility is more. And when you become a father or mother, your value system again changes. So according to the roles in your different stages of the life, your value system differs and it gets improves. And the last one is your hello effect. So hello effect is basically uh, which we deals with your peer group. 
Okay, so because hello is a word which uh, basically you know evolves from your informal gatherings. So hello effect is basically a system in which uh, your values are being improved and polished through your peer group. So these are the sources of values in a society. Now let's see what are the uh, different types of values. Okay, the first one is your ultimate values. So ultimate values means the values which you actually acquire from your uh, surroundings, from your family, from your education institution, from your peer group and all. So it is basically ultimate means, it, we cannot say it as like final values, but still ultimate means which is, you know, which belongs to you. So that's why it is called as ultimate values. And ultimate values is being incorporated to a particular individuals from his family members, from his parents, from his siblings, from his relatives, cousins, friends, etc. The second one is your democratic values. Your democratic values uh, is being incorporated to each individual according to the democratic setup in the society. For example, India is a democratic country. But when you go to a Muslim country, for example, your UAE nations, their values are different from the Indian system as such because we belong to a very democratic country. So our beliefs, our values are entirely different. That's when you compare that with a Muslim country. So the, so the political system or the political setup actually, you know, uh, plays a very important role in setting up the human values. The next one is your educational values. Educational values means the values which we actually, you know, gain through the education system. Because uh, it is through your schools and it is through your teachers that you actually uh, understood the fact that when a teacher comes into the class or when a teacher enter into the class, you need to stand up, you need to raise yourself and greet or wish her or him. So that is a value that you got it from the education system. And the last one, uh, we, we call it as subjective or internal value and objective or external value. We, I would like to explain it in uh, one point. Your internal values means the values which is being inculcated in ourselves. It is not being, you know, pressurized or it's not being incorporated by an external force. Whereas your external value or your objective value refers to the values which is being inculcated to an individual through the external forces. It can be education or it can be your family or anything else. Because it is due to the internal values, each individuals are different. Because we uh, normally used to say that, uh, 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 for example, person A is different from person B. Why we call it as like that or why we say that? Because per person A's values is entirely different from person B. So that is mainly due to the internal value that he has set up throughout his life. Whereas external values can be through religious factors, cultural factors, family factors, and so on. So these are the types of values which we have discussed. Another important topic in your first module is your morals. So what do you mean by morals? So moral are the prevailing standards in the behavior of the society in order to live in a group, which means that morals they can be said as a standard behavior, which each individual has to, uh, you know, inculcate to himself in order to live in a society. But morals are different from values. So in simple terms, it can be referred as morals are said to be, said to be expected behavior from each and every individual in the society. For example, uh, you know, after or during a midnight uh, or after 12 or 11 uh, in the night, in, in our society, it is expected that everybody has to be uh, inside the home, no much uh, sound, no howling or something like that. If somebody goes, uh, you know, outside the home or if somebody goes out and just, you know, um, howl like anything uh, at uh, 12 p.m. or 11 p.m., it's said to be not a moral thing because we expect, the society expect uh, ourselves, that means the society expect the people to behave in certain way. That is what we call it as morals. And moral values are very important in a society for living harmony. And now, what do you mean by ethics? So these values, these morals, these ethics, these terms are very interconnected and interdependent, without which we cannot set up a harmony and a peaceful living in our society. So now let's see what I mean by ethics. 
So ethics according to Oxford Dictionary is defined as a system of moral principles, rules and conduct. So ethics is nothing but it is a collection of morals, we can say that. Okay, so it's a collection or it's a system of morals, principles, or we call it as roles and conduct. That means we are expected to behave in such a manner. That is what we call it, call it as morals. Those kind of collection of those kind of expected behavior is what we call it as ethics. All right, so ethics, morals, and your values are all interconnected. Now, what are the importance of ethics? What is the significance of ethics in the society? It is a part of society because without ethics, you know, nothing can be taken forward. There should be ethics in everything for your education, uh, being a son, being a parent, uh, being a teacher. Being a teacher, uh, ethics is something we call it as, uh, you know, teach your subject without any uh, biased feeling. Value the paper without any partiality. These are the ethics that we follow as a teacher. So it's a part of society. And next one, it is the expectation of public. Ethics is what something that the public is expecting from us. Otherwise, we call it as they are deviants from the society. So these such kind of standard behavior is what we call it as ethics. When somebody violates this standard behavior, those people are we call it as deviant behaviors, which means a deviant. They deviate from the society. Then trust of employees. Ethics is what we uh, ethics is very important in order to get the trust of employees to the organization. For an organization, for example, if uh, our college, a college is concerned, if the management is following a very good ethics in their administrative system, it actually enhances the trust in employees to the management. So automatically what happens when there is a good trust happens in the, uh, or, you know, uh, evolves around the uh, employees, automatically the employees work more, the productivity increases, and the firm actually reaches to the very next level of growth. The next one, it is the uh, image of the institution. Because when you follow a particular ethics, it actually reflects the image or it actually reflects the brand of that particular institution. Whether it be education institution, whether it be corporate, whether it be IT sector, for anything for that matter. If you have a good image, which means that that particular company or that particular institution follows a good ethics practice. The last one, it is for the overall benefit. And when you follow a good ethics without uh, any uh, partiality to the uh, employers, any and the unfair practice in the uh, workspace. If you follow a very good ethics system, which means that it actually benefits an overall development of the society, for the overall development of the institution, and for the overall development of the country. The next topic which we are going to deal with is your integrity. So uh, when you talk about integrity, integrity is something that we actually relate with honest behavior of the uh, institution or honest behavior of an individual. When we call somebody as he is like, uh, you know, his integrity level is uh, more or he is like, uh, you know, very uh, good in his uh, integrity quotient, which means that uh, he has a good, you know, he is a very trustworthy person for that particular company as such. So integrity is used to describe a person's level of honest, moral commitments and willingness to do what is right. Which means that integrity is nothing but it basically deals with your honest behavior, your moral commitments, and his willingness to do what he thinks it is right. So it basically depends on the personal feelings too. So that's about the integrity. Now, the integrity has been divided into uh, different types, or we call it as uh, the types of integrity. The first integrity that we are going to deal with is your academic integrity. So academic integrity is the commitment by the teachers. For example, when you consider the academic integrity of teachers, we call it as academic integrity is nothing but to impart the education without any biased or without any uh, unfair practices. And this uh, Academic integrity stands on major five pillars or there are major 
five uh, pillars in which your academic integrity stands with. So your academic integrity, pillar number one is your honesty. Your pillar number two is your trust. Your pillar number three is your fairness. Your pillar number four is your respect. And pillar number five is your responsibility. So when you talk about uh, the five elements of academic integrity, I would like to put it as five elements of academic integrity. So the five elements of academic integrity are honesty, trust, fairness, respect, and responsibility. 